Yo, what is up y'all? This is Just Cozen and yeah, this is the first video on my channel. If you're a subscriber from my main channel watching this video, chances are you probably already know how much of a fucking nerd I am for this series. And if you're completely new here, welcome. Hope you enjoy your stay. So a lot of news updates regarding the development of Shin Megami Tensei 5 these past few months has been very surreal. <laughs> we barely have gotten any new information on SNC5 for so many damn years. Atlas, please don't ever do that shit again, bruh. After three to four years of little to no information on this game, we finally get a new trailer last year in 2020, which is odd timing considering pandemic. But regardless, <laughs> fast forward to this year, 2021. This year alone, we've gotten so much information regarding the gameplay, the story, the characters, everything really. SNC fans are eating really fucking good this year. But dare I say, they've been feeding us non-stop to the point of us going into a fucking coma. <laughs> but I guess it's to be expected. It's been so many years now. And yeah, this is where the idea to make this video came about. To pretty much condense most, if not all, of the major key details of Shin Megami Tensei 5 into one whole video. I'm going to start with the story and characters first, since they're obviously the most important qualities to a Japanese role-playing game. The story starts with our high school protagonist in this game who wanders inside of a tunnel, along with his fellow classmates. For an unknown reason, the tunnel begins to shake, which causes the protagonist to end up in an alternate version of Tokyo called Dot. Not that. Dot. Yeah, shit, it kind of sounds like Dot, but you know what I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> the protagonist gets immediately surrounded by demons, ready to kill him until a mysterious man named Algami, hopefully I pronounced that right, descends from the sky in a ray of light, telling the protagonist to take his hand if he wants to live. Come with me if you want to live. The protagonist reluctantly takes his hand and the two fuse into a being called a Nahobina. Let me just pause this real quick. This design really took me off guard at first, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it's like if Tron Legacy, Metatron from Undertale, and Zero from the Megman Et series all just got together and fused into one whole character. Like, Let's just be honest here, this character design is easily the most unique and eccentric in comparison to all the other prior SNC protagonist designs. However, I will say that this design has really grown on me, I'm not gonna lie. Being able to materialize energy from his hands into laser swords is honestly pretty fucking cool. It kinda reminds me of Razio from the Soul Reaper series. I also love how his armor has this blue neon glow to it as well, which makes the protagonist pop out even more in darker environments, which is kind of similar to Demi Fiend's tattoos now that I think about it. And yes, the hair is just, for a lack of a better word, fabulous. Like, holy shit, they really poured in a lot of their butts into his hair. <laughs> but continuing on... So after being fused into a Nahobino, the story is then set in motion. An interesting thing to note about this alternative Tokyo filled with angels and demons is that apparently the war between angels versus demons, or law versus chaos, has been going on in this Tokyo for over 20 years now. And not only that, according to Tao, and just a side note, I'll get into the other characters in a second, but she told the protagonist this line of dialogue. If I told you the Tokyo you've been living in this whole time was a lie, would you believe me? which is strongly hinting that Dot was the real Tokyo. And it also seems that you'll be able to go in back and forth between these two Tokyos. And I know for some people it was kind of a letdown, like, I know there were those who were hoping for a purely apocalyptic single Tokyo like Nocturne, but I actually find this to be very intriguing. Okay, so this is post-production right here. Um, I just realized that I am about to spoil the shit out of people that probably do want to play SNC4. So with that note, I'm just letting you know, this is the timestamp. Please don't flame me. <laughs> but it does remind me where in Shin Megami Tensei 4, you actually travel into two different versions of Tokyo's. One where Law wins and one where Chaos wins. And with SNC5 having a Tokyo that I would assume to be undecided of who won and is still going, it's pretty intriguing shit. Anyways, we later learn in the story trailer that this tentacle looking demon is kidnapping students in the same school that the protagonist and his friends attends. And it's revealed that an organization called Bethel is led by the Prime Minister of Japan. More on him later. Bethel acts as Tokyo's defense against demon attacks. The protagonist and his friends join his organization assumedly right away after they come back from Dot. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole summary of everything we know so far regarding the plot of SNC5. I know there's probably a few details that I skimmed over, but your boy's not trying to make this video like an hour long. Like, <laughs> So right now, like I promised, it's time to go over the supporting cats of characters. So like I said before, the protagonist has friends who go to the same school together. So let's start with them first. The first student's name is Tao Isunokami. Hopefully I pronounced that right. 
Tao is a third year student who is also a member of the lacrosse club. Not only that, but Tao is also gifted with some sort of spiritual abilities, basically like a sixth sense. She also happens to be already affiliated with the Bethel organization before the protagonist and the other classmates join it. I also want to point out that you may remember seeing this girl along with the protagonist in the old announcement trailer that we got in about almost four years ago and in that trailer they get attacked by demons but the more recent trailers show only the protagonist getting attacked before getting saved by Algami, which is pretty interesting to see that they decided to change Tao's role in the story. Honestly I want to speculate more about Tao on like what her modus is or her alignment could possibly be but I'll say that for another video. The next classmate's name is Yuzuru Atsuda. He is described to being a responsible, capable, and assertive person. So he's basically the dad friend of the group. After wandering inside the alternate Tokyo with the protagonist, he later joins Bethel to fight against the demons so that he can protect his sister, Fem Joker, I mean Miyazu, <laughs> and, to <laughs> and Tokyo as a whole. And yeah, that's basically it for now. We actually don't know much about Yuzuru yet. I saw the fact that he and a new demon doggo named Hayataro will be affiliated with each other due to sharing some with goals and ideals stated by Mayusuke Doi, the game's character designer. But outside of that, there's barely any new information about him, surprisingly. Miyazu Asuda is, as you already know, the sister of Yuzuru. She is the only living family member that Yuzuru has. She's a very shy and reserved young girl, and apparently she's going to be caught up in the middle of the demon's attacks on the school. Not gonna lie, I get a lot of, I'm going to fucking die early on vibes with her. Seeing how she's going to get caught up by the demon's assault on the school, and the fact that this is Shin Megami Tensei we're talking about here. But we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> And the last classmate's name is Jake Paul. Nah, I'm fuck with you. It's Ichiro Desai. He's known to be a cheerful guy, but he's also known to be socially awkward as well. He also happens to be fucking live streaming in a tunnel right before it collapses. God, I wonder who that reminds me of. <laughs> But nah, I actually find Ichiro to be a very intriguing character. Throughout the trailers, they strongly hint how desperate and naive Ichiro is to prove himself to be reliable and dependent on. He mentioned how he's borderline useless at school and is always making trouble for other people. This is kind of unique because normally characters like him with this archetype, I would immediately say that he's totally going to be the chaos rep. But with the fact that he actually wants to have the power to protect Tokyo and has the word angel written on his hoodie, and we see him talking to Abdil, who's a higher ranking angel, more on her later. It's really interesting and I can't wait to see how this character develops later on in the story. Alright, we're done talking about the classmates. It's time to talk about the other characters. Starting with Hayao Kojimisu. Kojimitsu is a prime minister of Japan and the main representative of Bethel under the Japanese branch. He is described as being calm, collected, and strategic. He gives the protagonist friends the demon summoning program and asks them to aid Bethel against the demons. Yeah, this guy seems really fucking sus. Like, you mean to tell me the prime minister of Japan is fine with giving high school teenagers a fucking demon summoning program to fight against demons? Like, really think about that shit. Like, not only that, Throughout the trailers, we clearly see him aligned with angels, and if you ever played an SNC game before, you can probably sense the red flags being at play here. Unless you really fuck with law, I guess. I don't know. That's cause Jesus Christ is my And I didn't even mention the fact that he looks exactly like Algami. I don't trust this guy at all, bro, but I'm not going to lie. I do really fuck with that checker tie. But on the surface, another intriguing character nonetheless. Next we have the commander of the angels, Abdil. This angel is described as being stern and uncompromising. She'll give no fucks if she has to kill anyone that crosses Bethel or, by extension, the will of God. Abdil oversees Bethel's headquarters as well. She's basically that supervisor that everybody would hate to work with. But if you played SNC before, this is pretty much standard to how most, if not all, angels operate honestly. But even so, I gotta admit, I actually really dig her design. On the opposite spectrum, we have Joka. You probably was suspecting another Persona 5 cringe joke, but oh shit. Oh my god, look at her strut! First, I'm that bitch, I'ma only say it one time. I body all these bitches with just one rhyme. Shoot them up, spit them out like it's gum time. Chop them up, throw them in the trash, like it's lunchtime. Bitch, I'm the best, so I'm gonna get the best. Bitch, I'm the best, so I'm gonna get the best. Bitch, I'm the best, so I'm gonna get the best. Bitch, I'm the best, so I'm gonna get the best. My goodness, bro. Like, I know she's barefooted, but it's not hard to get that Black Air Force activity vibes from her. Like, she literally takes the angels that are laid out on the floor as Makatsuhi energy for her own goddamn self. Alright, I'm sorry, let me have to get back into this video. <laughs> Joka is also known as Nuwa. She is a goddess in Chinese mythology who is famous for making humans out of clay, repairing the pillar of heaven, and being the wife of Fuchi, who is an emperor god. In SNT5, she is affiliated with that man that looks awfully like Raido. <laughs> 
His name is Shohei Yakumo. We don't know for sure if he is like their new Raido or has the title of Raido Kusunoha, but seeing how these symbols and the colors differ from the original Raido design, and with Joker stating that Yakumo is quote unquote her other half, he's probably just his own character. But it is interesting to note that he does share the same voice actor of Raido and the Japanese dub for Nocturn HD. He's definitely going to be a reoccurring rival for Nahobino. I think this is Atlas's way of giving us a call back to Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne since in that game, Raido or Dante, depending on which version you choose, is the rival for Demi Fiend. I also don't think that he's Fuchi either because not only is Fuchi the husband to Joka, he's also her brother. Yeah, it's incest. And yeah, I want to believe that Atlas is smart enough to not go that route. I think Yakumo is probably a human that was created by Joker herself from her clay. It would also explain why for a human he kind of seems unusual with having glowing yellow eyes. And the last thing to note about Yakumo is that he is a demon hunter. Again, a callback to Nocturne featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. I think the last character to cover here is Aogami. Yeah, the guy that you fused with at the start of the game. Unfortunately, there's hardly anything to really know about Aogami outside of what I stated prior and how he and Koshimitsu looks exactly alike. It's probably due to story spoilers as to why he's so mysterious. But even with the lack of information for him, I do think it's still kind of worth noting that Aogami states his ambition in the Nahubino trailer that came out not too long ago, saying that he will protect the protagonist at all costs and wants to ensure that the protagonist creates his own destiny without a single regret. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty wholesome of him. And it's refreshing to have a sponsor who's actively supportive of the protagonist. He's almost like the opposite of Dagda in some ways. But yeah, this may be a minor detail in hindsight, but I still feel like it was worth noting at least. Post-production Kozen returns once again. At the time of this recording, Shin Megami Tensei 5 new stream just dropped with volume 3. Honestly, I was trying my hardest to drop this video before then, but I had a lot of bunch of stuff to do. <laughs> But anyways, in the Volume 3 trailer, we got to see the demons that work in different branches of countries in the Bethel organization. Kanzu, who represents the Egypt branch, Fasaki, who represents the India branch, Zeus from the Greece branch, and my boy Odin from the North Europe branch. I gotta say, this is a really interesting approach to involve other countries in some capacity. I haven't seen that since Strange Journey. But yeah, the Volume 3 trailer didn't offer that much new information outside of that, but nonetheless, this is still a very interesting development of Bethel. Alright, I think I pretty much covered all the main characters, so let's get to the gameplay finally. So I'm mainly going to cover the improvements, changes, and differences of SNT5 in comparison to prior SNT games. If you never played a SNT or even a Persona game, this section may not be for you. This is pretty much for those who are relatively experienced or at least knowledgeable on Mega 10 games. If you want a more proper introduction into SNT, Persona, or Mega 10 as a whole, then I highly recommend watching this video instead, made by Gnarly. Anyways, let's continue forth with SNT 5's gameplay. So, on the surface, it's pretty much Shin Megami Tensei at its core. You get S returns by exploiting weaknesses, you negotiate with demons in hopes of either recruiting them to your team or farming Maka, you can fuse demons to create even stronger demons, all that good shit is intact. And this is the first SNT game since Nocturne to be fully 3D. So with this new SNT game comes, of course, new improvements and mechanics. One already that should be obvious, which is the fact that this is the first ever Shin Megami Tensei game to have an explorable open world. In prior games, you were only able to navigate through the map to get where to have to go. You can only explore dungeons really in prior games. But now you can actually explore both the open world of Dot and the course of dungeons. Nahobino is also capable of running like a Naruto character and sliding through terrain like he's surfing. It's a little goofy admittedly, but it's still pretty fucking awesome. And this time around, you can actually see demons in the open world, which is just the icing on the cake. Not only does it help to know what demons you're trying to recruit, but it just improves the immersion factor by tenfold with this change. Getting into the battle system of this game, like I said, is pretty much standard SMT, but if you look at the top right, you would notice that there is something very unusual this time around. That being the Magatsuhi Gauge. The Magatsuhi Gauge gives you access to use Magatsuhi skills, which are very powerful abilities, that could change the momentum of the battle. There's tons of different Magasuhi skills that both the Nahobino and Demons can use. So far, we got to see a Magasuhi skill that grants a party a guaranteed crit attack, which is kind of similar to SNT4, the Demon Smirk system in that regard. We got to see Nico Shogun, a very low level demon, being able to use an almighty skill very early in the game, thanks to the Magasuhi gauge. So basically, it grants you the use of far more powerful abilities, and you fill up the gauge after every press turn. And yes, the enemy demons can use the Magasuhi skills as well which is good and i guess to be expected since in snc4 the enemy could use the demon smirk system as well 
I'm looking at you, fucking Walter. Hoy, what do you say? I'm not gonna lie, while I do miss the demon smirking system from SNT4, I think the Magatsuhi gauge will make the battles much more interesting due to the fact that there are a lot of different skills for it. Moving on from the battle gameplay, let's get into the sorta of new but really reworked customization features for the protagonists and demons. This time around, we have what is called Essences. Essences is what all demons hold when it comes to their skills and attributes, and you can use Essences to have your protagonist or your own demons learn skills from the demon you're extracting the essence from. It's pretty similar to Strange Journey's demon sources and SNT4's demon whisper mechanics, but that's not all for customization though, like there's also miracles that you can purchase from collecting this shiny jewel looking thing called Glory. If you played SNT4, then you should remember the at point system. That's pretty much miracles in SNT5. From what we've seen in the new Volume 2 trailer, Miracles can grant Nahobino mastery over elements like All Might. There's a miracle that will raise the stat of a demon when you summon him by one, and there's another miracle that can increase the chance of a demon negotiation going successful. This is fairly optional customization, but for those who are grind heavy demons and JRPGs like myself, this is always welcome. I think the only thing that's left to point out with SNT5 is the music. Recently, Atlas uploaded like a preview of three songs in SNT5, and they're all fucking bangers. I just can't wait for the soundtrack to release because SNC4 is actually no bullshit like my favorite video game soundtrack of all time. To have the same composer for SNC5, I can easily say this is gonna be already like top 5. I'm not sure if this is gonna surpass SNC4, but if it does, I'm gonna be so happy. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the video. I'm gonna provide timestamps, so if it's too long, you can just like use the timestamps to get to where you wanna go. If you don't wanna watch the whole video, I get it. But I genuinely hope that you guys found some use for this video. I'm extremely passionate about Mega. 10. Look at my fucking wall right here. Like, <laughs> I probably plan on doing a lot of Mega 10 content for this channel, but I still want to like dwindle some other content of just whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, that's the main purpose of this channel, but I'm not gonna lie, I do want to focus on Mega 10 content. So, if you want to see more of it, just let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, uh, if you're new here, please drop your boy a like and subscribe if you want to see more of it. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.